The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Mr Speaker, that, that member <laughs> and the previous speaker from National Party wanted to take a lesson in history and read some of their own speeches. Mr Speaker, a lot has happened in the high country. Back in the 1990s, Mr Speaker, the National Government did two things. It tried to resolve a couple of anomalies in the leasehold area, one with Maori reserve lands and the other with Crown pastoral lands. Two pieces of legislation, one in 97, one in 98, were passed. The National Government drove tenure review because a couple of reports had said, let me quote Mr Speaker, successive governments have agreed in principle that the Commission is finding that pastoral leases should be freeholded to release their potential and to offer the opportunity for better stewardship, Mr Speaker. Well, that's effectively what tenure review did. And so it was set in train by the National Government. The idea being that there were some areas of the high country that were better in private ownership and some areas that were better put back to the Department of Conservation. And the National Government drove that, Mr Speaker. We came in, we came in Mr Speaker, we did not disagree with that in principle. But some of the easy transitions had occurred and it was getting more difficult. So we ended up with some properties that had been freeholded, had been on sold. So the valuation set in the tenure review process for the high country land was proven to be way below that of its market valuation. So the Crown, as the owner of the land, was left in a difficult situation. Should it just ignore the market valuation of high country land that people like Shania Twain, uh, Tom Sturgis, a number of people, a number of New Zealanders were paying big money for, should the Crown ignore the market valuation? In fact, in fact, oh, they say yes. In fact, the law says that a valuation must be taken on an equivalent area of land, and that gives you a fair indication of the value that you're, of the property that you're looking at. Equivalence, Mr Speaker. A simple term for it. Mr Carter runs off because he doesn't like hearing this, Mr Speaker. The fact is that the Crown had a legal obligation to charge a lease based on the valuation of the land. Now, we run into the technical and difficult issue of unimproved land value, Mr Speaker. And in fact, the high country lessees have taken this issue to arbitration and have won their case, which is why we have this piece of legislation. Well, I don't uh, disagree, as I said in my press release, with the general principle of affordability of rents based on the productive capacity of the land. But it's hard to establish that, Mr Speaker, because in a bad year, if you're just running dry stock, Mr Speaker, and just running beef, you might not get very much income at all. If you're running fine merino, you may get a slightly better income. Or if you're running a very profitable tourism operation, you might have a very worthwhile operation. So how then do you identify the productive capacity of the land? And I put to you that that is something we... I put to this House, Mr Speaker, that is something that we will test through the select committee process to how we will establish that, because the changing land uses of the high country have been well known, well publicised, and in fact are not limited by what we're doing today, Mr Speaker. So the issue of the productive capacity will be difficult to establish. We in government did offer some compensation, some right to negotiate with high country lessees. I went to Treble Cone, Mr Speaker, the ski field spoke to the high country lessee and laid that out on behalf of the government, Mr Speaker, and we're still committed to that. But the issue of principle is then, in passing on through tenure review or other process, the right to then have control of that land, should that right be on sold, the question is who should then retain the value or the, the extra value, the, uh, the unrealised value, Mr Speaker, when the rents have been set. Some might call it a super profit. If you're paid on a productive capacity of, say, 300,000 gross income, Mr Speaker, you'll work out your rent accordingly, 2% or whatever the government's going to do. But then if that block of land is sold for 10 or $20 million, then some would ask the question, well, that was a very low productive capacity. And that indeed may be the case, Mr Speaker. 
But the high country lessees have argued that the valuation should not take on board other values beyond that of productive capacity. If we accept that in principle, then I go to the Maori Reserve lands, Mr Speaker, another piece of legislation passed by the National Government. They then had three kinds of land. There was agricultural, there was commercial and residential. Mr Speaker, I have had constituents walk from their homes because they have not been able to afford the increasing the increased rent lease on their leasehold property. The argument goes briefly like this, that the Māori people who own the land have leased us on a 21-year rent review process, perpetual right of renewal, just like the high country people, Mr Speaker. But the National Government in 1997 said that we're going to change the rules. This has been unfair to Māori landowners and we need to straighten it up. I agree with that in principle, Mr Speaker. But the lease was based on unimproved land value for the people who had their homes on those properties. And when it came to calculate that lease, Mr Speaker, could the valuers identify unimproved land value? No, they could not. They were obliged by the Valuation Act to say that the value of that property was equivalent to a freehold property of the same size in the same block and that was what the rent was going to be charged on. So people in their homes, Mr Speaker, had their leases go up, to quote the Minister, not hundreds of percent, but thousands of percent, Mr Speaker. And some of them had to walk from their homes. So where is the national government when it comes to affordable leases for those people, Mr Speaker? Nowhere. So if you're going to be consistent, Mr Speaker, if the national government is going to stand on principle and talk about affordability, which, Mr Speaker, I believe in, then do something for Māori Reserve lessees. And there'll be a number of people over there, farmers, who know full well what I mean, Mr Speaker, when it comes to some of the Taranaki leases. There are a 1,000 of the 2,000 leases in my electorate, Mr Speaker, or the electorate that I'm campaigning in now. So I do know a little bit about it, Mr Speaker. The issue of affordability is rejected by the national government when it comes to state, own, uh, state housing rentals, Mr Speaker. Do they ask what the tenants in state houses can afford to pay? Well, they're doing it for high country, they're doing it for high country lessees, Mr Speaker. And I, in principle, I stop you squawking. I, in principle, Mr. Speaker, agree with that. But if we're going to Order. have, Order. if we're going to Order. have, Order. I'll ask the member to withdraw that comment. I'll ask the member, the comment that you just said to, to the government member, just withdraw that comment, please. I'd like to know, point of order, sir, I'd like to know which ones you said. Talking about. You said a very unparliamentary term, and I'd like to withdraw it. You're gone. No, not that one, the one following that. Oh, sorry, shut up, you're gone. I yep. withdraw. Well, uh, now I want you to withdraw and apologise. I, I withdraw and apologise. The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. S Mr Speaker. I have a passion for the high country too. I've skied there, I've, tra I've been out in those areas, I have enjoyed time at Moldsworth, I've been to Minaret Station myself. These are iconic, spectacular locations, Mr Speaker. I admire... I admire the strength, the determination of the people who farm those areas, Mr Speaker. But times have changed. Mr Speaker, it is easier now to farm those properties than it was 10 or 20 or 30 years ago. Oh, I wish that member would get off her butt and get out and find out, Mr Speaker. Now, thankfully, they use helicopters for mustering, Mr Speaker. Now we've got the aid of mechanical means to get around, and that's great. There's a different way of life in the high country now than there was 20 or 30 or 50 years ago, Mr Speaker, and that is something we welcome. But there's also a new appreciation of the values of that iconic land, Mr Speaker, and it's appreciated by a lot of foreign investors. They are willing to come and buy and pay huge amounts of money for land that bears no resemblance to its productive capacity. 
So as long as people are on those areas, Mr Speaker, farming them, looking after it, protecting, as they have done in the past, appreciating, loving that land, Mr Speaker, then we should give them affordable leases. I don't have any problem with that. The question is, when that comes to transfer on, then who gets the right to the excessive valuation above and beyond that of productive capacity, Mr Speaker, because that's the value at minute that many of those transfer on, Mr Speaker. The reason that Labor is opposing the bill is because this no, government sorry, is not the consistent time has expired. when it comes to affordability.